Hello friends, in this video we are going to discuss about fluid pressure and its measurement. We will also see the basic laws that are used to calculate the fluid pressure such as Pascal's law and hydrostatics law. We will also see its practical application in daily life. We will solve one numerical based on these laws and finally we will uh, see the devices used for measuring fluid pressure such as manometer and mechanical gauges. Fluid pressure at a point. Fluid is a, any substance which is capable of flowing which may be a gas or a liquid. This fluid exert a pressure and that is defined as a normal force exerted by fluid per unit area of the surface. Consider a unit area dA in a large mass of a fluid and the surrounding fluid is exert pressure, exert force on this area that is dF. Then the ratio of uh, force that is uh, dF which is acting normal to this surface area dA, the ratio of dA, dF to dA is called as a intensity of the pressure. And when this dF is uniformly distributed over this area A, then this Pf is also given by the equation P is equal to F by A, where P is the pressure or the intensity of the pressure and F is a force acting normal to the area A. Now, this uh, P is expressed in terms of uh, different units, kilogram force per square meter and kilogram force per square centimeter is used in MKS unit. Newton per square meter and Newton per square centimeter is used in SI units. Newton per square meter is also known as a Pascal and is, is represented by PA. Other commonly used units of pressures are kilopascal which are equals to 1000 Newton per square meter bar which is equals to uh, 100 kilopascal or equals to 10 raised to 5 Newton per square meter. Basic laws in the fluid pressure measurement. The first one is a Pascal's law. Pascal defined the pressure or the intensity of the pressure at any point in the fluid at a rest is same in all direction. If you see this figure, this figure consists of the system which consists of a tank full of liquid and here it consists of a channel through which the fluid is flowing. The channel is also filled with the fluid. Now, as per the Pascal's law, the intensity of the pressure at point P1, at point P2 and at point P3 is same. That means it is same in all direction at a particular level. This level is called as a datum or the reference line. So here, an external pressure applied to an enclosed fluid is transmitted uniformly throughout the volume of the liquid. So this, uh, here, uh, in this above figure, the figure is not uh, enclosed, but here the figure is enclosed. This is a, a ram. We can say uh, this. This is one of the type of uh, pressure uh, um, hydraulic press system in which ramp is there, and at the other side is a plunger. So here. Uh, when we consider that as per the Pascal's law, intensity of the pressure is same in all direction at a reference, then we can say that pressure in is equal to pressure out. That is intensity of the pressure at inlet is equal to intensity of the pressure at outlet. That means as the definition P is equal to F upon A, force upon area, we can write for inlet and outlet term, F in upon F uh, A in is equals to F out upon A out and same formula we can use for calculating the pressure at a different point. So these are the practical application of this Pascal's law. So this is the hydraulic lift which can use to lift the any vehicle from the uh, vehicle parking. Another uh, application of this Pascal's law is a braking system in the vehicles. Second, hydrostatic law. 
So according to hydrostatic law, at any point inside a static fluid, the vertical rate of increase of pressure must be equal to local specific weight of a fluid. That means if you consider this column in which a fluid is filled and the pressure acting at a height h is given by P is equal to rho g h. That means the intensity of the pressure is varying from the height to height. Right? So it is given as P is equal to rho g h. We will also have the different example. This is the tank which is filled of the liquid and at a different level there is a opening A, B and C. And if you see the pressure at point A that means uh, shallow, shallower which is lowest pressure and you can see the uh, pressure flow acting here. Similarly as compared to the A, B and C we will see that the intensity of the pressure is at C is highest so that flow can reach a larger distance. That means the intensity of the pressure depends upon the height of the liquid inside the column. You can see this numerical. A hydraulic press has a ramp of a 30 cm diameter and a plunger has 4.5 cm diameter. Find a weight lifted by a press when a force applied by the plunger is 500 Newton. Here, uh, this, this is a plunger where a force is applied. Diameter of ram is 30 cm. Similarly, diameter of plunger is 4.5 cm. Force applied on the plunger is 500 Newton. We have to find the weight which is lifted up at a ram due to the intensity of the force 500 at a plunger. We will use the same formula that is F by A at inlet equals to F by A at outlet. So here for inlet and outlet we can see uh, F by A at plunger is equal to F by A at a ram. So here we know force at a plunger that is 500 and we can also find out area of plunger and area of ram from these known quantities we can find out the lift uh, the weight lifted by the ram so here area of ram is given by uh, pi by pi a is equal to pi by 4 d square and which can be calculated as a is equal to 0 0.07068 square meter and area of plunger is 0 0.051519 square meter now uh, we will see the intensity of the pressure due to plunger that is F by A can be calculated as uh, 314.65.4 Newton per square, centi uh, square, uh, square meter. Now the same intensity of the pressure is transferred from this plunger to the ram. So here we can have due to Pascal's law the intensity of the pressure will be equally transmitted in all direction and hence the pressure intensity at ram is given or is given as F by A equals to W by A and hence intensity of the pressure at ram can be given W by A and here W by A, A is the area cross sectional area at ram and intensity of the pressure we have already calculated here and W by A is equals to this pressure and hence we can calculate W is equals to 22.22 kilo newton. So here in this way by using the Pascal's law we can find out the weight lifted by the ram at other side if we force a pressure if we force at a, this plunger side with a force F. Now we will see the different types of pressure. We will have a different pressure absolute pressure gauge pressure vacuum pressure and atmospheric pressure absolute pressure is the sum of the pressure due to fluid and pressure due to atmosphere gauge pressure this is the difference between the absolute pressure and the pressure due to atmosphere and vacuum pressure is also defined the pressure below the atmospheric pressure so at sea level 
and 15 degree Celsius, the atmospheric pressure is 101.32 kilo, kilo Newton per square meter. And atmospheric pressure here is 760 mm of mercury or it is also expressed 10.33 meter of water. Now in this diagram we can explain, uh, explain the same pressures. So this, this, this is a, a reference line or datum line that is called as a atmospheric pressure and above this pressure the pressure is called as a gauge pressure and below this the pressure is vacuum or that is called as a negative pressure. So by using this figure and the formulas we can have absolute pressure is equals to atmospheric pressure plus gauge pressure and also have absolute pressure is equal to atmospheric pressure minus vacuum pressure. Now we will measure the pressure. So when we uh, use the measurement of the pressure, the pressure of the fluid is measured by uh, following devices, manometers and the mechanical gauges. Manometers are defined as the devices that are used for measuring the pressure at a point in a fluid by balancing the column of the fluid by the same or another column of the fluid. They are classified as simple manometer and differential manometers. Mechanical gauges. These are the devices used for measuring a pressure by balancing fluid column by spring or dead weight. The commonly used mechanical gauges are diaphragm pressure gauge, burden tube pressure gauge, dead weight pressure gauge and bellows pressure gauge. Now we will see a manometers. So the first one is a simple manometers. Simple manometer consists of a glass tube having one of its end connected to a point where pressure is to be measured and other end remains open to the atmosphere. Common types of simple manometers are piezometer, U-tube manometer and single column manometer. Now we will see about the piezometer. It is the simplest form of manometer used for measuring a gauge pressure. One end of this manometer is connected to a point where the pressure is to be uh, measured and other end is open to the atmosphere. The rise in liquid gives a pressure here at that point. So if at a point A the height of a liquid say water is H in piezometric tube then the pressure at a point A is given by formula Pa is equal to rho g h. Now this is another type of manometer that is U tube manometer. It consists of a glass tube bent in U shape. Okay, and one end of which is connected to a point where the pressure is to be measured, and other end remains open to the atmosphere. The tube is generally contain a mercury. This liquid is called as a manometric fluid and which is may, uh, which is generally a mercury with uh, or other liquid also there with the specific gravity which is strictly greater than the specific gravity of this liquid whose pressure is to be measured. Now this uh, uh, YouTube manometer is used to calculate or to measure the pressure for positive pressure as well as negative pressure. When the pressure is positive that is gauge pressure the height of the liquid of manometric fluid will increase and when there is a vacuum inside the pipe in that case the height of the liquid from the that uh, column will decrease, decrease for a vacuum pressure. Now we will see how the pressure is measured from YouTube manometer. Let A be the point whose pressure is to be measured. Then uh, H1 is the height of uh, liquid above the datum line. This is the datum line. A A dash is the datum line. Then H2 is the height of heavy liquid. H2 is the height of heavy liquid above a datum line. Then uh, rho 1 and rho 2 are the densities of light liquid and heavy liquid. As pressure is same in hor uh, horizontal surface, Hence, the pressure above the horizontal datum line is same in both column. That means pressure at this point and pressure at this point is same as per the Pascal's law. Then pressure above datum line in left column is nothing but this Pa and P1. Right. So for this case, we can have the sum of this pressure. So Pa 
plus P1 is nothing but rho1 g h1. Then pressure above datum line in right of right uh, right hand side column can be a P2 here, and it can be given as rho g, uh, rho g uh, uh, rho, uh, rho 2 g h2. Now equating these two pressures on this uh, two column will have P a plus rho 1 g h1 is equal to rho 2 g h2 and hence we can calculate P a is equals to rho 2 g h2 minus rho, rho 1 g h1. Now the second uh, types is differential YouTube manometer. So this differential YouTube manometer is used for measuring the difference of the pressure between two points in a pipe or two different pipes. It consists of YouTube and a manometric liquid which is heavier than the liquid which pressure is to be measured and this, uh, this liquid, manometric liquid should be immiscible than the liquid inside the pipe. So here the pressure difference between point A and B is to be calculated. So here at this point, the uh, this reference line, the pressure is same. Intensity of the pressure is same. So if we consider the left hand, then the pressure is PA plus P1. That is PA plus P1. And pressure on other side is PB plus P2 plus P3. Then P1 is nothing but rho 1 G H1. P2 is equal to rho 2 gh2, P3 is equal to rho 3 gh3 plus Pb. Then taking the uh, rearranging this equation, we will have Pa minus Pb is equal to rho 2 gh2 plus rho 3 gh3 minus rho 1 gh1. So in this way, we can calculate the differential pressure at the two points. The next type is inverted YouTube differential manometer. It is also used for measuring a uh, difference of the pressures between two points in a pipe or two different pipes. It consists of inverted U-tube with a light manometric liquid and it is used for measuring a difference low pressure. By using the same uh, expression in the previous one, here we will have instead of sum, there will be a subtraction of this pressure. As we go from downward to upward, the pressure will be subtracted. So here we have PA minus P1 is equal to PB minus P2 minus P3. And hence, rearranging this equation, we can have the difference pressure or differential uh, pressures in the difference PA minus PB is equal to rho 1 GH1 minus rho 2 GH2 minus rho S GH1. And in this way, we can calculate the difference in the pressure in inverted uh, YouTube differential manometer. Thank you.